Welcome YouTube fans to another edition of the comparison between the blue light view which I have over here to my right hand side and the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 h which we have over here. Now today's video is quite uh, simple. We're just going to go ahead and break these two phones down and see the pros and cons uh, and see which one comes up on top. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to look into is the design. That's what just about anybody first knows about a phone is how good it looks and basically design element, you know, what stands out, what pops out at you. So why don't we get started? So we're going to go ahead and look at the blue light view first. So why don't we just go ahead and move Mr. Uh, Samsung over here to the side and let's uh, take a look at the phone itself. Now, first of all, the first thing you would notice about this phone is this gorgeous 5.7 inch screen, uh, which dominates the entire phone. Uh, it is a very large screen, uh, you know, a lot you can do with this screen. Now picking up the phone, uh, it does have a little bit of weight to it. Uh, it's a good thing uh, because it shows a sign of, uh, I guess, premium uh, design that has went into it in the material or you know the uh, component or whatnot. Uh, it feels really good in the hand. One thing you will notice also right away is that if the glare gives it away is that this is actually a curved TP, which you know uh, people in the industry will know that it is a premium touch panel versus a flat uh, TP, which uh, obviously is lower end or lower grade. In terms of design, the phone itself is a very uh modern looking piece of device. As you can see on the side key right here, which is the power key, and of course the uh, side rocker key on the opposite end, which is a volume key, a lot of design went into this, um, I guess, button, or these button, as you can see. It's not your typical flat piece of plastic button on the side. It is actually a piece of metal, that which they went ahead and chamfered a very nice uh, polished edge to all the way around the uh, button itself. Same thing can be said about the power button. So that's the first uh, design element that I really, really like. Now turning the phone around, another thing that makes this phone premium is the material that they use. Now if you can only feel this one, it is cool to the touch and knowing that this is actually a real piece of aluminum, which, uh, you know, has a lot of points in my book uh, in terms of, you know, elegant and uh, high-end material. Now looking around the back, I mean, it's a very clean design, uh, you know, nothing really, uh, I guess, you know, is out of place. We have the speaker on the bottom, uh, and then we have the LED flash, the camera, and then we have these little three little dots right here, which I will explain later. It does serve a purpose. Now, in terms of design, again, they went ahead and basically added, you know, good touch to it. For example, you can see the chrome rings uh, accent or decor all throughout the back, such as the camera decor, the LED decor, and of course, you know, around the speaker hole itself. Again, you know, scoring points in terms of, you know, using that extra step to make the, the device look premium. Now, the device does measure, I believe, uh, 161 millimeter long, I suppose, versus uh, 82.5 millimeter wide. Uh, a very impressive 9.0 millimeter thin. But to tell you the truth, the proportion actually makes it look even thinner. I mean, I guess with all these nice curves that they, you know, uh, implemented into the design, uh, this device looks really, really sleek and very slim to the touch. Now, looking at the back also from a top view, I guess, you know, you can see that it has a nice curve on the back, which actually feels really good in the hand. And of course, you know, all these edge right here, uh, no such thing as a pinching or, you know, a sharp edge. So overall, the feel inside the hand is very comfortable. In, in all, I, I do think that this device, uh, you know, obviously went through a good phase of design element, changing and whatnot. And of course, another thing that I would like to point out are the uh, laser etch uh, blue logo, the certification, and of course the 12.0 megapixel camera, which uh, it is very inconspicuous, uh, which is a good thing in my opinion, because the uh, last thing I need is for something to pop out, so basically scream attention. Uh, this overall does give it a very nice design element. Now with that said, uh, why don't we go ahead and bring in its competitor, the Samsung Mega 5.8, and let's see where they stand. So right here, here we go. Okay, so this is the Samsung uh, Galaxy Mega 5.8. Well, let's first thing, let's pick it up. Okay, so first things first, let's be honest. I mean, this is a Samsung phone. It is a tier one phone. But one thing right off the bat that I do notice is that the design uh, is very typical Samsung. I mean, you have your, uh, I suppose, fake 
metal finish uh, because this is not real metal obviously it's plastic with some sort of brush aluminum finishing the phone itself uh, you know with battery because I went and took the liberty of placing battery in already the phone itself feels uh, very light you know to some people that might be a good thing but in my opinion it just feels like it's uh, plasticky if you will now looking at the screen I mean it is also a very big screen uh, again dominates the front fascia of the phone it measures 5.8 inches uh, diagonally hence the name uh, Mega 5.8. So you know it is a it is a direct competitor uh, between these two in terms of uh, dimensions. Now looking in the back of the phone design, it's uh, it's fairly you know it's fair to say that they did put in their element of design. Uh, you have your typical silk print, and then the battery cover itself. It is plastic, as you can see, flexible. It does have a relatively nice uh, pattern finish on the back with UV coating on top. The camera ring, uh, the camera itself, the speaker, and of course the LED is very typical Samsung element. That's the DNA, you know, uh, horizontal layout throughout the top and then, you know, side by side. Now, looking at the front fascia, it does have a pattern design also on the TP. One thing that, you know, I was explaining earlier about premium TP is in regard to flat TP. Now, flat TP is very simple. It is a piece of glass you know, that they basically stamp out zero, I suppose, I shouldn't say zero, but, you know, very minimal post-production work to achieve any sort of aesthetic value. And then they basically implement the uh, touch uh, sensors on the bottom and then uh, squeeze it tight with a uh, display and hence you have a TP assembly. Now as you can see um, this one is completely flat so you know comparing it to the light view it doesn't have that nice rounded edge you know that soft all-in-one feel uh, as you know some of the nicer curved TP if you will. And of course you know like for the Samsung right here is your typical mirror like uh, logo I guess deplating finish on the top and then a back key uh, on the bottom, which it did take the liberty of, you know, making a chamfer edge around that one. So that one at least, you know, gave them a little design point. Overall, I would say the design element is nothing new of Samsung. Uh, very typical of Samsung design. Uh, you have your TP, I suppose your middle housing, and then your battery cover, and the design itself, like I said, uh, nothing out of extraordinary. Now with that said, you know, with the phone side by side, I just want to take this opportunity to let you see that what's the difference between a curved TP and a flat TP. Now if I shift this to the angle, as you can see by the side on this edge right here, is that all this edge right here gives it a very nice curved area, hence the name curved TP. What it really actually does also is that it makes the entire unit feel like it's one whole piece, like an entire piece of solid unit versus a flat TP right here, which you can evidently see, especially with a chrome ring around the edge, that it is pretty much placed into, you know, like a cavity and boom, we're done. But with the light of V right here, you can almost feel as though this glossy TP melts in to the front housing. Uh, again, you know, in terms of design, and believe me, you know, I, I've seen quite a few design before, this actually gives it a very nice, um, complete you you know unit united feel if you will so again you know curved tp um basically is a premium style tp that you know uh, a lot more goes into making uh, and like i said it's cnc out to give it that curved shape uh, and then post production of sanding it down and then uh, polishing and buffering it until it becomes a glass like material again but you know more importantly is the fact that it gives it that nice curved wrapped around feel that you know, not too many company are willing to invest in. But luckily, uh, Blue right here, they went ahead and invested that much into it, giving it a very nice, uh, uh, soft and you know, uniform design element. So with that said, I mean, side by side, you can see that both are relatively your smartphone approach, a full touch panel up front. You know, turning it around, uh, that's where I, in my opinion, that's where the light view scores a little more points, just because of the uh, premium material that they're using which is aluminium and then of course you know some details around the camera ring the speaker slot you know overall it just feels cleaner and more modern in my opinion so with this element or this category i must say i will have to give it to the uh, blue light v all right so with the first part of the comparison uh, the design uh, taken care of, why don't we go ahead and jump into the next category, uh, which is the viewing experience. 
Now, being an end consumer myself, how good a phone looks is one thing, but the viewing experience, how well that screen lights up, and basically my eye interaction with the device is just as important. So with that said, why don't we go ahead and uh, you know tear these two down and see where the pros and cons are. So first thing is, let me turn both these devices on. And with that said, let me just move these uh, gift boxes out of the way so we can just fully concentrate on the device itself. All right, so first thing you would notice about these two phones are obviously it's vivid screen, 5.7 plus uh, inches of prime real estate. So with that said, let's go ahead and focus in on, let's take a look at the uh, blue light view first and we can just move this off to the side. So first thing you would notice about this screen, obviously it's this 5.7 inch uh, HD resolution screen. On this device uh, in particular, it is a HD definition. So you're looking at 1280 by 720 pixel with 258 uh, PPI, I believe, which is, you know, pixels per inch. With that, I mean, you're getting a really saturated color, a dense color. So, you know, anything that needs to to be um, you know detail oriented fully show up on the screen even as you can see uh, on the screen itself all the icons are really sharp I mean everything on the screen just pops out at you Another thing about this display is that it is a Blue Infinite. That's what they call it, the Blue Infinite, which is also the same thing as a IPS, which stands for uh, in-plane structure. Uh, in our field, basically, that's a type of display where technically, you know, at all angle, you know, if I just rotate it or you know, gyrate it like this, that you know, you can see the screen without any you know dark spots or any shadows of that nature. Again, it's a premium addition to this phone that you know Blue has incorporated. Usually, regular phones don't come with uh, IPS or you know, in, in this case, Blue Infinite View. Uh, so if you were to tilt at a certain angle, you know, it will become darker, you know, toward the bottom or the top and uh, vice versa. So again, you know, a very nice uh, addition. Uh, another thing about this viewing experience is also the, uh, the lens itself. What I do believe is that this actually comes with a Corning Gorilla Glass 2 lens. So in terms of reliability, and if you're those type that, you know, <laughs> drops your phone or, you know, scratch your phone quite often, this phone right here will actually, you know, save you a lot of headache because it does have, like I said, Corning Gorilla Glass 2, which is, you know, well known internationally for being one of the best glass provider for uh, for you know smart mobile phones or even tablets and whatnot all right so with that said i mean let's go ahead and you know maybe open a gallery and as you can see i mean the colors are just you know fabulous i mean scrolling around and by the way blue offers you uh, 30 plus default uh, wallpaper HD papers that you can choose from as you can see and all of them plays a crucial part in you know showing off the capability of the uh, display so if we just go simply go ahead and say uh, choose cupcakes over here and you know just basically blow it up as you can see I mean this is just it's just incredible I mean the colors are super rich and you can see every detail on that cupcake on, on those cupcakes excuse me and of course a shadow uh, you know the dark part is supposed to be dark and then of course you know highlighted part should be highlighted uh, overall, very impressive. Uh, let's take a look at another image, something like this one right here. Doesn't this just, you know, make you feel like you're there? I mean, it is just fabulous how, how clear the screen is. So again, the viewing experience on the life uh, view is just second to none, if you will. I mean, very impressive. Um, like I said, HD resolution with blue infinite view. Excellent. Okay, so why don't we bring in this competitor, the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8. And with that said, let me move the light view out of the way. So as you can see with this phone right here, um, it does come with 5.8 inches, a little bigger, just a little than the light view. But what I do know is that this screen itself is not as uh, premium as the light view. For one, it is a QHD, which stands for quarter HD. So that will give you, I believe, 540 by 960 pixel. And of course, you know, the density of it is, I believe, 190 PPI. So again, you know, not as, you know, saturated and, you know, dense uh, image as the light view. As a matter of fact, if you look at it, I mean, you could see a difference. I'll be very frank and honest with you. The icon itself, uh, those texts right here, I mean, if I zoom in a little bit, hopefully you guys can see it. You could actually see some of those uh, shadows. Actually, you can see the dots around the shadows. You know, like I said, you know, it's not a HD screen, so you're not gonna be expecting, you know, HD resolution. So it is, you know, somewhat, you know, I wouldn't call it super pixelated, but I could see dots around the shadow. So for one thing, it, it, it does fall a little short of the uh, light view. Okay, so I mean, like I said, uh, let's see what else we can look it into the phone itself. Uh, let's see where's okay here, right here. 
So we have gallery. Uh, let's see if we can see something in here. Unfortunately, Samsung uh, doesn't have any you know, default gallery image or anything of that nature in here. So I went ahead and took a picture myself just to you know, you know, briefly show you the image quality, if you will. And you know, it's a very quick snap, so you can have an idea, here you go, of what kind of image we're looking at. Uh, again, the color is not super saturated, but then again, it's not like, you know, some uh, multicolor issue. But, you know, I, I think it could have been better. Now continuing, I mean, having said, you know, uh, the spec of this Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 QHD screen, I think one thing that is very important is to be able to actually uh, see these two devices side by side. So why don't we go ahead and uh, bring Light View back into the show and basically uh, go ahead and just get this back to its correct orientation. There we go. Gallery, gallery. So I had went ahead and took uh, some pictures also. Same pictures uh, for best of my ability on both phones to let you see side by side. And as you can see right here, I mean, hopefully you can see the difference. I mean, it's very obvious that the light view over here, the colors are a little more uh, saturated, if you will, especially around the flush area uh, of the skin. So as you can see, the uh, saturation and the color on the light view actually stands out a little more than the Samsung uh, Mega 5.8, especially around the flush area. As you can see on the skin, I mean, you can see a little more like skin tone, you know, flush versus the Samsung Mega 5.8, which is a little bit whitewashed. Took the picture of the same arm, obviously, and you know, same lighting and everything side by side, and these are the uh, quality that came out. So it could be the camera, it could be the screen, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's all about the viewing experience, how easy it is to, you know, view something, how well it displays it, and so far, it seems as though, uh, not seeming, uh, actually as a matter of fact, the light view does come out on top in terms of uh, quality. Uh, and that's all in due to, you know, of course, it's HD resolution. And of course, you know, the uh, density in which, uh, you know, it's packing 258 pixels uh, per inch versus the 190 on the Samsung Mega. So let's exit all this stuff and give you one final look. I mean, one final look at the uh, screen right here. And as you can see, I mean, the, I guess the wallpaper plays a factor, but if you're here live, you can actually see that the icons on both the phones, uh, obviously, you know, the light view does, you know, have a sharper and crisper edge than the Samsung Mega 5.8. All right, so, you know, having seen the uh, still image and, and the uh, pictures, why don't we go ahead and view some of the YouTube video and see the quality uh, video. So let me just go in here, YouTube. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start these two videos and let me go ahead and make it orient sideways so as you can see I mean these two video I'm gonna go ahead and let it run first so you can kind of get an idea of what kind of quality you're looking at As you can see right here, I mean, you can definitely tell the difference on those edges and on the Amazon logo right here. I mean, first things first, I must say, the Samsung definitely fell short on that aspect because I definitely noticed a lot of pixelation on the icons and of course, you know, the, uh, the blue logo itself. And of course, you know, another thing that I did notice from my angle is that when I was viewing this, that, you know, at all angle, I could actually see everything very clearly, no dark shadow. But with this, for the uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, Mega 5.8, you can see right away, if I tilt this, that here, even if I get out and give you a brighter image, if I tilt at a certain angle, it'll start, you know, becoming darker on certain edges. So like I said, uh, in terms of the viewing experience, I would have to give this to the blue light view just because it's packed more feature into it with the uh, blue infinite view, AKA uh, IPS. And of course, you know, the um, HD resolution definitely helps out a lot. I mean, if you're looking for crisp, sharp images, 1280 by 720 pixel, then light view definitely trumps uh, the Samsung Mega 5. All right, uh, we're more than halfway through the comparison and right now we're coming upon one of the most important part of our comparison which is the CPU and the GPU category.
CPU obviously is a central processing unit and the GPU is the graphic processing unit. Now anybody that's in the phone industry or techie like myself will go ahead and basically tell you that the phone needs to have the highest memory, highest CPU and all that good stuff. But you know, we're here to break it down today. You know, we're here to compare these two and let end users know uh, where these two phones stand. Let you know what you're buying and you know, if qualified for what, uh, what you're looking for. So let's just start it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, focus in on the uh, blue light view first. So let me move Samsung out of the way. Okay, so this phone right here is running a MediaTek MTK6589 chipset. That is basically a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor paired with 16 gigs of uh, internal memory and one gigabyte of RAM. Now that combination right there offers user a fast and streamlined user experience. Breeze through any app or you know anything that's running on the background such as music will not interfere with anything that you're doing up front such as like viewing a website or whatnot. The Blue Light View also comes with a Power VR Series 5 XT GPU. That itself is a very nice uh, graphic processing unit that allows for nice uh, gaming and of course you know for all of us that watch YouTube videos uh, you know to, to view the nicer high D you know HD uh, videos and you know any game that require you know faster FPS which is frame per second uh, that should definitely take care of. Now so we're gonna bring in the competitor now the Samsung 5.8 uh, versus of course the Live View. Like I said earlier the Samsung itself is actually running a Broadcom chip uh, a dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor. Now it is a SOC uh, which is a system on chip. Basically this one also has a GPU that is called a Video Core 4 GPU. Now side by side these two phones are actually actually you know quite different one is a dual core which is a Samsung and then one is a quad core which is light view right here basically you know all this talking is all numbers but most importantly is to run some benchmark tests so you guys can understand where or how these two compare and give us a numeric outcome of you know saying who's on top triumphant. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I took the liberty of installing some of my uh, most used and of course ever popular benchmark software uh, such as N22. So why don't I go ahead and activate those real quick? Alrighty. And uh, of course I already ran it earlier, but you know again let's do it again so you guys get to see live. Okay, so here we go. And here we go. Okay, so let's uh, while this is running, I'll tell you a little bit about N22 for for those of folks uh, that are not aware of what N22 is. So basically, N22 is a benchmark software program that runs a full test of key project through you know the phone's memory performance, the CPU integrated performance, CPU floating point performance, 2D, 3D graphics performance, SD card reading and writing speed, and of course you know there's also the database I/O. You know just a, a log of tests that the phone does to basically give us a numeric uh, outcome as to which one actually is triumphant on top. All right, so uh, after running the test, uh, basically we got some numbers and if I could just bring it back out to this. So as you can see, uh, after running the N22 test, uh, the blue light view had a score of 13,857 versus the Samsung Mega 5.8 12,989. Now after running some numbers on that, that's about a 7% uh, difference in terms of the uh, capability of this phone, you know, favor of the blue light view. All right, so having ran the uh, N22 uh, benchmark, right now we're gonna go ahead and run another benchmark, and you know, just to um, clarify any doubt in terms of uh, each device's performance. And the second app that I personally like to use is called the 4G Mark. Again, it's a freeware that you can download off of Play Store and basically install it and then run the test and get a get a clear understanding of where your phone stands. So right here, so let me activate these two real quick. And it's called 4G Mark, okay? And basically, you know, I. I just go for the full test so here we go and while these two uh, tests are running which will probably take a little bit of time I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about 4G mark and you know uh, so you have an understanding what this is doing all right so 4G mark is, is a tool that's you know offered in the uh, Play Store it does you know your typical benchmarking of quality uh, of your phone anything that has to do with the GP 
GPU or the uh, CPU, usually it does the benchmark on that. Uh, it allows you to compare phones and network and place on, you know, just about every technology out there, being it 2G, 3G, Edge, LTE, 4G, whatever your phone does. So, you know, you can always download it and then see what your phone is capable of. Now, the test that I ran is called the full test and basically is a scenario with all the products, latency, the transfer, the web, uh, basically giving you the full visibility over the quality of the, you know, the connection environment. You know, it also calculates a score which lets you compare them with like different smartphones. So for example, like these two right here, obviously the live view and the Samsung Mega 5.8, it will give you again a numeric result to know where you're standing. Okay, so as you can see right here, the test ran. As you can see right here, it gave us a numeric outcome. So as you can see also, it's pretty much lopsided. I mean, the blue live view scores a, you know, very hefty 3,208 points compared to the Samsung uh, Mega 5.8, which scores 1,534 points. And like I said, you know, these are all numeric references to let you know what your, the capability of your phone in terms of GPU and CPU. And of course, you know, some of other, you know, stuff down here, it'll even let you know, you know, uh, what kind of connection I was connected to and then the fact that, you know, the test was performed uh, successfully. So again, you know, it's just another conclusion to let you know that the blue light view, no doubt, is triumphant over the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 8 due to its quad core processor and of course you know the 16 uh, gigabyte internal memory with one gigabyte of ram and of course you know the gpu you know running the uh, power vr series again like i said you know if you're in it for the uh, the oomph or the hp or the you know the, the the power of this device the light view definitely triumphs granted you know it's for playing game or watching video or taking picture or anything that you know you need your phone to do the light view definitely steps uh, you know one step higher than the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8. All right, so first thing you would notice about these two phones are obviously is vivid screen, 5.7 plus inches of prime real estate. Let's take a look at the uh, blue light view first and we can just move this off to the side. So first thing you will notice about this screen, obviously it's this 5.7 inch HD resolution screen. On this device uh, in particular, it is a HD definition. So you're looking at 1280 by 720 pixel with 258 uh, PPI, I believe, uh, which is, you know, pixels per inch. With that, I mean, you're getting a really saturated color, a dense color thing that needs to be um, detailed oriented will fully show up on the screen even as you can see uh, on the screen itself all the icons are really sharp I mean everything on the screen just pops out at you another thing about this display is that it is a blue infinite that's what they call it the blue infinite which is also the same thing as a IPS which stands for uh, in plane structure in our field basically that's a type of display where technically you know at all angle you know if I just rotate it or you know gyrate it like this that you know you can see uh, the screen without any you know dark spots or any shadows of that nature again it's a addition to this phone that you know blue has incorporated usually regular phones don't come with uh, IPS or you know in, in this case blue infinite view so if you were to tilt at a certain angle you know it will become darker you know toward the bottom or the top and uh, vice versa uh, another thing about this viewing experience is also the uh, the lens itself what I do believe is that this actually comes with a Corning Gorilla Glass 2 lens so in terms of reliability and if you're those type that you know <laughs> drops your phone or you know scratch your phone quite often this phone right here will actually you know save you a lot of head because it does have, like I said, Corning Gorilla Glass 2, uh, which is well known internationally for being one of the best glass provider for, uh, for you know, smart mobile phones or even tablets and whatnot. All right, so with that said, I mean, let's go ahead and, you know, maybe open a gallery. And as you can see, I mean, the colors are just, you know, fabulous. I mean, scrolling around. And by the way, Blue offers you uh, 30 plus default uh, wallpaper, HD papers that you can choose from, as you can see. And all of them plays a crucial part in, you know, showing off the capability of the uh, display. So if we just go simply go ahead and say uh, choose cupcakes over here and, you know, just basically blow it up. As you can see, I mean, this is just, it's just incredible. I mean, the colors are super rich and you can see every detail on that cupcake, on, on those cupcakes, excuse me. And of course, a shadow, uh, you know, the dark part is supposed to be dark. And then, of course, you know, highlighted part should be highlighted. Uh, overall, very impressive. Uh, let's take a look at another image, something like this one right here. Doesn't this just, you know, make you feel like you're there? I mean, it is just fabulous how, how clear the screen is. So again, 
The viewing experience on the Life uh, View is just uh, second to none, if you will. I mean, very impressive. Um, like I said, HD resolution with blue infinity. Okay, so what I'm bringing is competitor, the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8. And with that said, let me move the Life View out of the way. So as you can see with this phone right here, um, it does come with 5.8 inches, a little bigger, just a little uh, than the Live View. But what I do know is that this screen itself is not as uh, premium as the Live View. For one, uh, it is a QHD, uh, which stands for quarter HD. So that will give you, uh, I believe, 540 by 960 pixel. And of course, you know, the density of it is, I believe, 190 PPI. So again, you know, not as, you know, saturated and, you know, dense uh, image as the light view as a matter of fact if you look at it you could see a difference I'll be very frank and honest with you the icon itself uh, those text right here I mean if I zoom in a little bit hopefully you guys can see it you could actually see some of those uh, shadows actually you can see the dots around the shadows so you know it's not a HD screen so you're not gonna be expecting you know HD resolution I wouldn't call it super pixelated but I could see dots around the shadow so for one thing it, it does fall a little short of the uh, light view Okay, so, I mean, like I said, uh, let's see what else we can look it into the phone itself. Oh, let's see where it's, okay, right here. So we have gallery. Uh, let's see if we can see something in here. Unfortunately, Samsung uh, doesn't have any, you know, default, you know, gallery image or anything of that nature in here. So I went ahead and took a picture myself just to, you know, briefly show you the image quality, if you will. And, you know, it's a very quick snap, so you can have an idea. Here you go, uh, what kind of image we're looking at. Uh, again, the color is not super saturated, but then again, it's not like, you know, some uh, multicolor issue. But, you know, I, I think it could have been better. Having said, you know, the spec of this Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 QHD screen, I think one thing that is very important is to be able to actually see these two devices side by side. So why don't we go ahead and uh, bring Live View back into the show. So I had went ahead and took uh, some pictures also. Same pictures, uh, to the best of my ability, on both phones to let you see side by side. And as you can see right here, I mean, hopefully you can see the difference. I mean, it's very obvious that the light view over here so as you can see the uh, saturation and the color on the light view actually uh, stands out a little more than the Samsung uh, Mega 5.8 especially around the flush area on the skin I mean you can see a little more like skin tone you know flush versus the Samsung Mega 5.8 which is a little bit whitewashed took the picture of the same arm obviously and you know same lighting and everything side by side and these are the uh, quality that came out so it could be the camera it could be the screen but at the end of the day like I said it's all about the viewing experience how easy it is to you know view something how well it displays it and so far it's the light view it does come out on top in terms of uh, quality uh, and that's all in due to you know of course it's HD resolution and of course you know the uh, density and we're packing 258 pixels uh, per inch versus the 190 on the Samsung Mega <music> Okay guys, so we're heading into the last part of this uh, comparison and having you know been through the first couple of categories I must say that the light view is definitely ahead of the race right now in just about all the categories But you know heading into the last leg of the race. I mean the most important part the uh, basically the price we know that basically the blue product always offers a great deal for your money. You get great value for your money. Now with this, uh, I want to bring it back into you know the casing and the gift box that uh, these two phones came in. Because obviously, when you're paying for something, you're you're essentially you know getting everything that's inside that box. So I want to evaluate and point out some some of the accessories that these two phones came with to justify you know the cost. So you know to begin with, let's let's go ahead and change it up and begin with the Samsung this time, the Mega 5.8. Now for this device right here, uh, essentially you can get this uh, online, you know, like Amazon for $359. That is a premium price, typical of a tier one OEM phone such as uh, Samsung. Now of course you get your so-called you know handset and then inside the box uh, let me just briefly show you basically you have your uh, you know the default uh, screen graphic and then you're gonna have instruction some uh, headset extra buds uh, USB cable and of course the DC charger okay so you're gonna get all those accessories uh, for $359 and of course the phone itself is a uh, like I said 
dual core 1.4 gigahertz uh, processor, a 5.8 inch screen. Uh, shifting over here, uh, the blue light view, basically you can get this one online, uh, such as Amazon or any e-commerce. Where, where I got mine was Amazon, and you can get it for $297. Uh, and what does $279 get you? Well, let's see, let's open the box, okay? So you have your you know charger, your headset, USB cable, extra earbuds, what else? Let's see, stuck in here. Okay, so we also get, what is awesome, you also get a silicone case, a uh, protective case. $20 value, you know, easily if you were to buy anything that's like, you know, third party or, you know, anything like, I don't know, um, that, that mobile silicone case. And of course, you know, you get your manual and you also get here, which is a screen protector. Again, another probably like eight to $10 value. And of course, you know, this one you can easily peel off, okay, and then stick this onto the uh, so-called TP and it prevents scratch and resistant. So two things that obviously, you know, Blue Light View offers more than Samsung is silicone case and the uh, screen protector. And the price was $297. Now, that is basically $62 less than the tier one Samsung phone. So we're, we're talking like 20% less in cost, but you get more accessory, okay? All these accessories here, which let me just throw it back into the box. And then let me bring up the phone. But more importantly is you get the phone, okay? The headset, that's the creme de la creme of the entire package, okay? And what are you getting? Well, you're getting quad core versus a dual core. And then you're getting 16 gigs of memory and one gig of RAM, you're getting 12 megapixel camera versus the eight megapixel on the Samsung. And essentially, I mean, I think that's enough to say already that the blue light view, you're getting bang for your buck. I mean, you're getting much, much more value for a higher piece of device versus a so-called tier one Samsung phone. So at the end of the day, guys, I mean, Having said, you know, and ran all those tests and uh, the comparison and stuff like that, I would clearly give this the winner to the Life View. All right, so with that said, I must say that, you know, the Blue Light View is pretty much triumphant over the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 in every aspect possible, from the screen display, to the CPU, to the memory, to the accessory, to the ergonomic of the phone. I think that this phone definitely is one very, very well-polished gem. Thank you very much for tuning in to my uh, comparison video. I will be uploading much more video in regards to the Light View uh, as I go along and, you know, study more about this phone. Phone. So be sure to uh, come back and check us out another time. Thanks guys.